Hello everyone, welcome back. Alright, let's check out this mysterious cave place that I just gained entrance to. Sigrun's cup. Perhaps I can put some berries inside of the cup? Hmm. No. Perhaps I can put some Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> uh, can I talk to the large skeleton? Wouldn't surprise me if it's actually alive. It wouldn't surprise me if this altar's alive. Maybe I can have a chat with that. A skeleton much larger than the small creature was sitting in a dark corner of the cave. <laughs> what? Sitting in a dark corner of the cave? There is no dark corner of the cave. Everything is dark. Everywhere, everywhere, everything, and every single place I've ever been is dark. There is no dark corner. It's a dark world. And not to mention, there isn't even a corner in this cave because it's kind of, well, circular. And circular things have no corners. Ah, I love this game. A grim fate. The small creature stated with a sorrowful sigh. Oh, 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 did I just take its head? As the creature touched the skeleton, the skull fell off, exposing a burning air bloss. I've always wanted an air bloss. And also a skull. Maybe I can put the berries inside of the skull? Hmm. No. Hello, are you a being? An ear bloss is a faint remnant of a being who performed an equal amount of good and evil deeds during its life. A soul forever kept in a state of limbo between two worlds. During these darkest of nights, they appear dancing around the places of their passing, doomed to mesmerize lost passers-by to follow them either to safety or demise. Huh. Equal amount of good and equal amount of bad. But how do you weigh good and bad? And the chances of, of those two being exactly equal, that must be very slim. Whoever this was was very unlucky. I guess I should have been just a little bit nicer or just a bit more of a dick. Either way, either fate would probably be better than being in limbo. Touch it. The small creature's hand passed straight through the glowing apparition. Talk to it. Hello. Are you able to hear me? The creature asked, receiving no response. No, I didn't expect to. Bones in a variety of shapes and sizes were scattered around the cave. Always a comforting sight. The alva peeked out from behind the creature's ear as they approached the bones. There are so many. What happened here? The small creature thought, looking around the cave. Well, if I had to guess, I would say there's something that is here meant to protect the... The altar. The cup, perhaps. I wonder where it went, though. There is a dark hole. Maybe it's in there. Can I take a bone? Lying around the bones was a long rope, all of which looked to be in one piece. That'll come in handy. Let me make sure I'm not missing something here. Bone pile, altar, a bunch of things that look like buttons. No, I think that's it. Maybe I can put the pile of rope inside of the cup. Hmm. No, okay. Alright. Rain, steam, tornado, wildfire, thunder. What are these? The cave walls had been covered with peculiar tablets, depicting various parts of the environment. 
Wait a minute. I have a tablet. Am I supposed to put it here in the opening? I really wish I could understand what they mean. The small creature said to its friend, who looked equally bewildered by the strange shapes. The stone tablets gave off a faint glow as the creature moved its hand over them. Looks like I can't use any of my runes. Which is strange. Normally I can use at least a couple of them. Alright, let's try to use the rune here. Actually, no, let's examine the opening first. An oddly shaped hole in the wall was surrounded by strange carvings. What could the purpose of this be? The small creature asked the Alva as it examined the peculiar hole. The small creature reached into the hole but found nothing inside. Alright, let's use it. The creature placed the stone tablet into the opening in the wall. As it was put into the opening, the tablet began to glow. What do you suppose this means? The small creature asked the Alva as both of them tried to figure out the strange inscription. Ocean. Looks like I can look at it further. Why is nothing happening when I do that? That's weird. I'm pretty sure that icon means that you can, like, zoom in on it. But it's not doing anything. But anyway, my runes are now usable, so I'm guessing I need to do some sort of a rune-based puzzle. Let's try water first, because that looks the most like this. The ocean. Hmm, okay. I see, so it's got part of it, and then if I do flame... Hmm. The stone tab. Alright, so I can't really do anything with... Can I do anything with ocean yet? No. Right, that does that, and then I could do nature to fill out... Okay, that does thunder. Looks like this might just reset it. So if I do this and then nature, that should fill out the trees, right? Yeah. Okay, maybe I can keep these going. And then nature. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I don't know if there's a particular order you need to do this in. We'll see. Water and this. Oh, whoa, what the? Why did it reset? Do I have an arbitrary amount of moves to do it in? Yeah, let me see if that's true, actually. Let me see how many moves I have. Alright, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Hmm. Looks like there's no hard limit, but rather I guess I did something in particular that broke it? I don't- I'm not exactly sure what I did. But anyway, let's try that, and nature. Cool. Try flame and this, that does that one. Do flame and nature, we'll get the treat. What the? I don't get why it's disappearing exactly. What if I just do the lower ones? Hmm. 
Like, it looks like I can use the ocean. But I wonder if it's just intended as a reset button. Alright, well, this, I mean, this is an ocean tablet that I just put in it. And all of these involve water where the others do not, I believe. So maybe I'll just do all of the water ones and that will do something. Steam. How do I complete that? Is that fire? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so as soon as you get three, it resets. So, which ones do I need? I guess that's the question. The ancient chamber walls are covered with various stone tablets. The poetic serpent spoke of an ancient riddle. Perhaps this is the riddle. The old stump seems to be wounded. Alright, once again, I'm not sure if I have the information to solve this yet. So let's go out and let's see what I can do with my... My newfound cup, skull, and a rope. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with that with either the serpent or the angry tree stump. But I shall try. Wait a minute, what if I put the rope on the root? It's supposed to be sturdy, right? Ooh, it actually worked! The creature tied the rope to one of the thicker roots, pulling hard at it to make sure it wouldn't come loose. Now, hold on tight, and I'll make sure we get down there safely. It said as the wingless Alva nervously grasped its ear. I'm actually surprised that I got that. See, I never would have figured that I could possibly use any sort of a ladder or rope, given my body, and I'm still not certain that I would be able to. However, I've now, I'm now convinced that you actually can, for some reason, since I used the fishing net on the well. I really don't think I could, though. I can't even see my arms. How could I possibly grab onto it? Ah! It's an overcomplicated way to get to the other side. A rotten tree about to collapse at any second was standing near the edge of the collapsed ground. If it falls over me, who would be able to help? The small creature pondered, glancing at its fragile friend. Absolutely no one. That's the answer. No one. By using all of its strength, the creature managed to topple the rotten tree, creating a bridge to the other side. It's another lost soul. An Airbloss. Another one. An Airbloss? During these? Why are there so many? Hello? Anyway, there's apparently a broken wagon here. Although I don't even know how I can tell it's a wagon. It just looks like a bunch of... A bunch of parts of wood just kind of rotting and broken on the ground. At the bottom of the ravine lay the remains of an old cart, which probably belonged to someone of the creature's size. If you find anything around this cart, it's yours. Take it. We don't want any beasts to come looking for us. Bye. The creature read aloud from a group of small scribbles carved on one of the planks. What? I guess they're very, very nice. Okay. I'll help myself to some rotting pieces of wood. Searching through the shattered planks, the creature found a wooden wedge. Just as it was about to turn away from the wagon, the Alva tugged on its ear, noticing a faint glimmer beneath its feet. What beautiful craftsmanship! The creature exclaimed, brushing aside the tall grass concealing an old necklace. As the starlight made its way down the ravine, something about the necklace seemed strange as the creature studied it. It shined vaguely different from metals it had previously encountered. A wooden wedge. Can I... Ooh, I can probably use that to repair the wound of the tree stump. Beguiling necklace. It actually looks like a perfect... It looks like it goes perfectly with Seagrin's cup. Hmm. Hmm. 
I guess using a necklace on a skull that has no neck is probably not the wisest idea. Hmm. Yeah, let's go to, uh, let's go try to help the tree stump. Was it the ravine? Or the... It's the burial ground. Burial ground, yeah. Hello, don't eat my face. As the creature struggled for a while to fit the wedge into the hole, the bison's eyes and mouth stood wide open. The creature gave the Alva a confused look, but then something happened. Oh, okay. The ground started to crumble violently, and with the sound of roots snapping and twigs cracking, the bison rose from the ground. A loud creaking could be heard as it stretched out its arms before looking down at the small creature with the same insensible look as before. The creature didn't move an inch, and after a while, the bison turned around, marching into the swamp with giant steps, quickly disappearing from sight. What was all that about? The small creature asked its friend, as they both stared with big eyes after the bison. Bye. I guess it appreciated my act of goodwill and help and didn't eat me. I thought it was stuck to the ground, but it turns out it wasn't. Wow. That thing's kind of terrifying. Another air bloss. An air bloss. Ju There's gotta be something I can do with them if they keep popping up. They must somehow be relevant to what I need to do, but... Well, let me try this one. This rune. It's the only other one I can use. It's gonna make that... Yeah, that thing appear again. The small creature could... Mm-hmm. Can I put them inside of the cup? <laughs> no. I'll give it a beguiling necklace. No. I don't know. I obviously need to do something with them, but I don't know what. Let me go to the, uh, the Riddlin snake. So, you want to hear the riddle again? Very well. Mm-hmm. I am reborn amongst my siblings. Together, we are one. As I rise, I can see all of them look up at me in my newfound form. I travel together with my brothers and sisters as I fall, crashing down with them on the roof of the world. I slowly make my way down as more of my siblings join me. It is close now. I am reborn. That's the answer to the riddle, isn't it? I mean, well, it's not the answer to the riddle, but it's the answer to the... the tablet problem. It looks like he's describing sort of the... the water cycle, kind of, or something like that, whatever you call it. Reborn amongst the siblings, which is the ocean, right? I guess? Hmm. Like, steam, rain, and then river? Like, water comes from oceans. I mean, well, it comes from everywhere, but particularly comes from oceans, and it, you know, goes up into the... And into space, and then space clouds come down in rain, and then falls in rivers, and... Yeah, okay. Let me try that. Steam, rain, river. And then from the rivers to the ocean. So steam is flame and water? Yeah. 
And then rain, which is water and nature, or whatever this rune is called. Yeah. And then water and... Well, no, I guess this is nature. What is this then? I don't know. This thing. The green thing. Bingo! As soon as the droplet hit the stone, the cave started to shake, and from a crack in the altar emerged a strange and wondrous plant. It's like a ghost plant. It's like a spirit plant, an ethereal plant. A strange apparition in the shape of a plant was spreading a calming glow throughout the chamber. Hello? Are you able to hear me? The creature asked, receiving no response. The plant reacted as the creature's hand went through the transparent stem giving off glowing spores in response to its touch. As they filled the air, the Alva let out a loud sneeze. <laughs> you can actually hear it. Itchy powder. Uh... What am I supposed to do with itchy powder? I don't even have any, like, quests listed. What does that mean? Maybe if I put the itchy powder on the skull, I can make it sneeze. Hmm. No. Maybe if I put it in the... Okay, forget it. Maybe I can make the snake go away. As the spores reached the Vitorm's nostrils, it couldn't help but to sneeze, and from its mouth, a disoriented ear blossom came drifting out. The Vitorm continued sneezing as it slithered away down the ravine, soon disappearing amongst the undergrowth. In its departure, it had left behind a mesmerizing piece of its shed skin. Mesmerizing skin. That doesn't look mesmerizing to me. It looks just kind of disgusting. Also, I'm pretty amazed that I've gotten about 20 minutes into the game so far and I haven't actually used, uh, had to use the walkthrough once. I'm pretty amazed, but that's probably going to change. Okay, now what was said about its skin? It's mesmerizing, I know that, but what else? There's some there's something more about it. Um And why are there so many air blosses? Must be the land of souls in limbo. There's so many of them. Can I can I put this can I put the skin over the large skeleton? Would you like your skin back? Hmm. 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 I actually have no idea what to do with this. Uh, skull? Hmm. No, that doesn't make any sense. What? Hmm. What do I do with its skin? I don't know what to do with the skin. Hmm. Also, does anyone else find it really funny that I've had these I've had these dried flowers literally since the beginning of the game and have never used them? Not once. They've just been sitting here. Never used. I got them from the bowl in the very first scene.
one of these days, they're going to be useful. That day is probably not today. Right, so I've got some mesmerizing skin, a beguiling necklace, Seagrin's a cup, a skull, some roots, some copper wire, blackberries, and some dried flowers. All of this comes together to, of course, form... What? I have no idea. Whoa. That's interesting. It formed a bunch of triangles that form a larger triangle. Unfortunately, though, besides that, it didn't seem to do anything. Hmm. I think it might be walkthrough time. I feel like I should do something in here. But what? What if I put the skull? Can I put it back? Hmm. No. Hmm. Okay, yeah, it's walkthrough time. Alright, let's see what we do. Alright, it's going through the bison. Mm hmm. Wait, get. Give the lantern containing the five air bloss. What? When did I make a lantern? Apparently you can make a lantern, but how? Okay, at some point in here you're supposed to make a lantern, I guess. How... How would I make a lantern? Uh, I mean, the air blast was inside of the skull, but... Hmm. Do I put it on something? Hmm. 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 I must be missing an item. Hmm. I've got to be missing an item. No. Alright, I need to make a lantern and collect the air blosses. Hmm. Wait, put the dried flowers in the... Wait, what? Okay. I just found it. Burial ground? I'm supposed to use the dried flowers somewhere around here. The next to the decorated gravestone. Where's the decorated gravestone? Oh, I do need to go to the right island. I thought I could, but I couldn't seem to be find out how to do it. But I'd, oh, hi. The small creature could feel a strange presence in the marsh. But just as quickly as it appeared. Oh, I'm supposed to use the roots. Using the thick roots, the creature was able to traverse the foul water. I, that really doesn't make any sense. They're just floating. I don't think they could support my weight. They would just... Whatever. Don't think about it. Anyway... larger gravestone, more decorated than the others, was lying on one of the small islands. How sad. It doesn't look like anyone has tended to it in a long time. The small creature remarked with a sigh. 
The creature tried to make out the name on the stone, but the letters were no longer readable. Right, so even though you don't have any reason to do this, apparently you're supposed to put the dried flowers on it. As the creature placed the dried flowers in the vase, it felt a chilling gust of wind moving across its small body. Out of thin air, a transparent entity appeared, floating above the gravestone. It's a... a licked gooble? <laughs> I'm probably totally mispronouncing that. Uh... A licked gooba is a being Gooba. can be seen after nightfall. Licked Gooba. Dwelling in swamps and marshes, they drift through the air, often with a lit lantern in hand, following the wind currents between the trees. Their alluring light is said to mislead travelers off the road and deeper into the marshes, far away from any who would hear their cries for help. Another very creepy creature. Well, apparently I need its lantern. Let's have a chat. Actually, let's try to pet it first. When the creature attempted to touch the licked gooba, the hand went right through his transparent body, sending chills down the creature's spine. Hello. Hello. The licked gooba shouted as the creature approached him. Hello there. The small creature responded, happy to be welcomed for once. Hello. Where are you? Come back. The licked gooba continued, seemingly not taking notice of the small creature. I'm down here. The creature said, feeling slightly confused as it waved its little hand to get the licked gooba's attention. The licked gooba stopped shouting and looked down at the creature. They're all gone. All my friends blew away with the wind. Don't they like me anymore? Why would they leave me? The licked gooba sobbed as he covered his face with his shroud. I didn't mean to scare them. I really didn't. You believe me, don't you? The licked gooba continued as he regained his composure. Sure I do. Say, what do your friends look like? The small creature asked. Maybe we can help you find them. Well, they are small and bright looking. They live in my lantern, you see. Without them, I would never be able to find my way through these marshlands. The licked gooba said, making a sweeping gesture through the air. Is that one of my friends you have there, on your shoulder? You aren't stealing my friends now, are you? The licked gooba asked with a stern and almost threatening voice. No, no, this is my friend. She can't fly, so there's no way she could be one of them. The small creature exclaimed, protecting the alva with its hand. I see. The licked gooba sighed in disappointment. Would you at least please take my lantern and keep an eye out for my friends? Five of them there are. I will remain here in case they should find their way home. Right, so this creepy creature uses a lantern filled with trapped souls. Yep, that's pretty creepy. However, their simple existence appears to be a prison, so I guess putting them inside of a lantern is just efficient. That must be one of them, the creature said to the Alva, who responded with a nod. Where do you think the others might be? Oh, I know exactly where they are. Actually, do I have enough? I know I need five. I don't know if I have five. Oh, 
In fact, I think I only have four. No, no, there's five. There's two up above. Yeah, one that was inside of the skull and the other one that appeared. Hmm? Okay, cool. stated with a sigh of relief. Perhaps we'll now be able to leave this place. Maybe I can follow the guiding light of its soul lantern. Whoops. Talk about green energy, huh? Powered by souls. Dear friends, you're safe with me once more. The Licht Goober quickly grabbed the lantern from the small creature's hands. Oh, thank you for finding them. Is there anything I can do to repay your kindness? The creature looked at the Alva on its shoulder. Well, we have been searching for something that could help her fly. The small creature responded. But so far, we haven't found anything at all. The Licht Goober pondered the creature's words for a moment before answering. I know of a very old place. However, it's not somewhere I would like to take the two of you. The Licht Goober shook his head. It's a frightening place, you see. No longer what it used to be. More frightening than you? And so, the Licht Goober began to lead the odd pair through the marsh. As they traversed the murky waters, the small creature wondered if it had chosen wisely. Not so much worrying about itself, but for its fragile friend. Still, it didn't feel discouraged, but glad, relieved that their strenuous search might soon bear fruit. As the small creature looked around, it could see nothing but tall, dark trees encroaching on the clearing. Where are we? Is there someone here that might be able to help her? The Licht Goober raised his lantern. This place, it wasn't always like this, you know. Over the years, it has been the destination of many ailing beings in need of help. Not anymore. It's been corrupted. We shouldn't have come. The Licht Goober turned his attention towards the trees. Some of them are still here. The creature felt a nervous tug on its ear as it responded. If you hadn't helped us, we would never have gotten out of the marsh. I don't think we have any choice but to move forward. The creature looked at its friend before continuing. If this place used to be as powerful as you said, there has to be someone still here that can help. I will make sure that no harm comes to her. The creature tried its hardest to sound sure of itself, and its words seemed to calm the Alva down, if only a little. Very well. If there is something that would be of help to you in this place, I hope you find it. Good luck to you both, kind friends. I bid you farewell. The Licht Goober bowed before slowly fading away as he drifted back towards the marsh. Oh, 
Don't be sad. Remember how far we've come. We'll find someone that can help you. Just you wait, the creature said, giving the Alva a gentle pat on her head. You will finally get your wings. Great, a place even creepier than the last. Looks like the trees are laughing at me, about to swallow me up. Let me guess, I can make their eyes glow with one of these runes. Let's find out. What did that do? Oh, it makes creepy things appear and look at me. A little bit of rainfall. Hmm. Lights up the gravestone. Thunder. A strangely familiar totem decorated with a deer skull had been placed at the edge of the woods, spreading a pungent stench throughout the clearing. Ew. What an awful smell. What could be the purpose of such a thing? The small creature said while looking at the Alva, who desperately tried to cover her nose. As the creature touched the pungent-smelling horn, it crumbled, turning to dust in its hands. Did I just gain horn dust? Smelling salt. I don't think I want to smell it. No thanks. Growing along the edge of the clearing were an odd strain of plants emitting a soothing glow from their bright buds. This light, how do you think something like this comes to be? The creature asked the Alva, who was leaning forward in an attempt to inspect the peculiar plant. As the creature poked the stem of the plant, the bud started to pulsate, as if aggravated by the faint touch. Ah, we'll leave him alone then. Whoa! Shadowy being, hello! You're obscured by a tree. I'm gonna leave you there. I'll get back to you later. The dark woods, far too dense to travel through, were slowly encroaching on the clearing. Not even someone as small as you would fit through that thick web of branches, the small creature said to the Alva as it peeked into the dark entanglement. The creature attempted to force its way through the woods, but gave up as it didn't have the strength to break the tough branches. A mysterious plant had come into bloom and was now spreading its spores throughout the forest. So this is what they will look like when they grow up? The small creature said to the Alva as it pointed at the smaller plant surrounding the larger one. I guess so. When the creature brought its hand closer to the plant, it suddenly released glowing spores into the air. As they landed on the creature's hand, a strange numbness came over the affected skin. Numbing powder? Hmm. That could come in handy. Well. I guess if I combined the skull with that, I'd be a bit of a numb skull, wouldn't I? <clears throat> Partially hidden within the undergrowth, there was an old, scarcely decorated gravestone. It doesn't look like any 
anyone's been here in a very long time. Do you think they got lost on their way here? The creature turned to its friend, who was tilting her head to have a closer look. The creature began to brush away the dirt from the gravestone, but it didn't appear as if there had been a name inscribed on it. No name. Strange. Alright, to the right is a campsite, and to the left is a creature. Let's go speak with the creature. Whoa. Okay, hi. A shadowy figure had begun to follow the pair as they traversed the narrow trail, yet for the moment, keeping its distance from the small creature. Why is it following us? The creature whispered while the Alva kept her eyes peeled on the dark shape remaining at their backs. A strange being appears attracted to the glow of the Alva. How do I even know that? How do I know it's attracted to the glow of the Alva, not just our existence? Strange. Well, I probably can't speak with it, but let's try. Why is it fun? Oh, I already tried that. Try to touch it, touch it, touch it. As Come on, go to it. As the creature moved closer, the being quickly disappeared into the shadows. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to. To the cliff. What do you suppose that thing is over there? Do you see it? The creature asked the Alva who was leaning forward in an attempt to spot the small object. What are you referring to, that? The water statue? Whoa, Jesus oh, Christ! The creature quickly <laughs> took a step back, surprised by the mangy arm that had suddenly appeared from below the cliff. Didn't expect the jump scare, that scared the shit out of me! Fucking hell! All right, goodbye. I'm going to the campsite. This place has an unsettling feeling to it. The small creature whispered as they walked through the abandoned encampment. Why did they leave all of their belongings behind? That is a very strange sort of lean-to camp thing. Very tall, very, very tall, and also looks incredibly ineffective at covering the fire because it appears to only be covering half of it. Also, the ancient tree appears to be alive. Let's try the runes. Hmm. Oh, I activated the earth statue. I'm not sure what that did. What did that do? I don't know what that's doing. Collapsed tent. One of the tents had at some point collapsed and was laying in the wet grass at the edge of the campsite. How sad. This was someone's home once. The creature said as it looked down at the wet mass laying on the ground. The creature picked up the cloth canvas, along with the partially corroded iron post. Cloth canvas and an iron bar. I feel like I'm going to be assembling some sort of a freakish skeleton. Like scarecrow thing by putting the skull on the iron bar and giving it some mesmerizing skin and some cloth and bling it out, blinging it out with a beguiling necklace and a pimpin cup. But I'm probably not going to be doing that, but I feel like I I feel like I should be able to do that. Even if it doesn't actually solve anything. I feel like that's something I'm entitled to. I feel like that's something everybody should be entitled to. 
is a tiny tent. Look at that. A ragged piece of cloth held up by a pair of sticks formed what appeared to be a tent. Looks cozy enough, the creature said as it inspected the tiny sleeping area. That tent's actually smaller than me. Inside the tent, the creature found a thin, slightly bent metal blade. A meat rack. Beside one of the tents stood a poultry meat rack, created from two carved poles connected by a long string. They must have really been in a hurry to leave their food behind, the small creature said to its friend as it gave the meat a poke with its finger. The small creature picked up the smelly haunch of meat. That makes me think even more that I'm going to be making some sort of a freakish Frankensteinian monster. This meat could be one of its arms. The Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. I meant to do the Earth statue. The carving had suddenly lit up and was now pulsating slowly, giving off a burning light. These statues must mean something, the creature said to the Alva, who was peeking out from behind its ear to have a look. The statue was cold to the touch, apart from the area surrounding a small carving on its base. The fire had long since burned out. We could sure use a warm fire right now, the creature said, looking at the shivering Alva. As the creature rustled around in the ashes beneath the coals, it found a sooty horseshoe forged from steel. Why would somebody put that in the fireplace? Very strange. Alright, so I'm gonna make some sort of a Frankensteinian meat man horse beast. That's what I'm gonna make. I hope. If the game will allow me to. Hmm. Can I forge anything from what I have right now? Nothing I can think of. Have a look at this tree. An ancient tree was standing by itself at the far edge of the encampment. Throughout the land, you might sometimes hear rumors of injured woodsmen sheltering themselves beneath an unusually large tree with strange characteristics. As they rest amongst its roots, they claim that the wounds fade away as if they had never been caused. Learning that one may be cured from any ailment by crawling through the tree's roots, many travel from afar to seek relief, but the woodsmen who claim to have found it never seem to recall its exact location within the woods. Would you mind talking to us for a short while? The ancient tree barely seemed coherent, the lucidity in his eyes fading between each word. So tired, must not fall asleep. Help! What should we do? He seems really scared. The small creature looked at the Alva. We need to help wake him up. Right, so I need to give the ancient tree some drugs. Or some smelling salt. 
There you go. As the creature blew the smelling salt onto the ancient tree, he quickly recovered from his drowsiness. Thank you, he exclaimed in a drawn-out fashion, both eyes wide open. Thank you both. I almost fell asleep, you know, just like my brothers. You mustn't. The ancient tree's voice turned mellow as he looked out across the campsite. None of them wanted to talk to me, so I simply remained silent. Suddenly, it almost took me, the glow. Almost, but you made sure it didn't. That would have been bad, very bad indeed. The ancient tree sighed. I wish I could repay you. But unless you're in need of herbal knowledge, I'm afraid I can't offer you much in return. If you should happen to find any herbs you would like me to process, I'd be happy to help, he said before munching enthusiastically. Although I would need to rinse this horrible taste from my mouth before I could create a proper mixture. If you're in need of my help, could I first trouble you to find me something scrumptious that will restore my taste buds? Uh, d I... Does anyone know what you normally feed trees? Um, I mean, I have meat, but do ancient trees eat meat? Here you go, have some meat. Mm. No. Mm. Apparently they don't. What do trees eat? Do you eat skulls? Hmm. Berries? Delicious! The ancient tree exclaimed as he bit into the ripe blackberries. It's been a long time since I tasted something like this. Good things don't like to grow here anymore, you see. Some beings infect everything they touch. He muttered. But no matter. When you need my assistance, come see me again. I should be able to create a proper mixture for you, provided you can find good ingredients in this place. Alright, so I'm going to be finding ingredients, and I'm going to need to make some sort of an herbal mixture for something. I have yet to find out what for, but I'm sure I will soon. Guarded Passage. I'm not entirely sure what that is over there, but given that I see what looks like part of a red eye and gigantic teeth, I'm thinking it's probably going to be really fucking scary. What do you bet? Let's go take a look at it. Yep, yeah, I'm going to go over here. An unfinished totem had been placed at the center of three large stones, decorated by various rune carvings. It looks like it's missing something, doesn't it? The creature said as the pair beheld the strange creation. Actually, maybe I am going to be creating some sort of a skull Frankensteinian monster thing. The totem was firmly stuck in the stone slab beneath it. Well, what exactly is it missing? It has been erected in front of a formation of inscribed boulders. Uh, I don't know. What do you put on a totem? A head? It's an air statue. Far in the back, they're almost hidden. A statue depicting an ominous creature was standing near the tree line. These statues must mean something, the creature said to the Alva, who was peeking out from behind its ear to have a look. The statue. Alright, let's try out the runes. I did something to the left, can't see it. What is that going to do? Okay. Makes it salivate. Hmm. 
lights it up around the unfinished totem, and this will activate the air statue. So what happens when I activate them all? That's what I want to know. What did I just do? Odd statues has have been odd statues have the odd statues there. Now I can properly talk. Properly talk. Yes, words. Pronounce words. Odd statues have been raised in different parts of the forest. Let's try the skull on the unfinished totem. Oh yeah, I'm gonna bling you out. I'm gonna give you a necklace. Ah, I still wanted to give you a necklace. All right, how about a cup? Hmm. Mm. Meat. Hmm. Iron. Actually, wait a minute. Cloth. Hmm. Skin. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. What else could I give it? A horseshoe? Hmm. Actually, maybe that's good enough. Let's try. No. This still says unfinished. Could I make a horseshoe necklace with this copper wire and... No. I mean, I already have a necklace, so I don't really need one. Blade. I could cut this, but cut it into what? I don't know. I'll come back to you. Let's go speak with this lovely Glosson. You look friendly. Hi. You kind of look like a pig. Like a porcupine pig. Glosson, vile and repugnant, is a large sow that dwells in the depths of the forest. Her battened body covered in razor-sharp thorns. She may appear either as an omen in places about to be visited by great misfortune, or to prey on travelers walking along the forest's edge. As she runs towards her victim, the thorns on her back are said to grow larger, cutting the unlucky traveler in half as she sprints in between their legs. After she has satisfied her gluttonous urges, she returns to guard her home in the darkest part of the woods. Cutting the unlucky traveler in half? Uh, the traveler would have to be very, very large. Compared to my current size, for that to be able to actually go in between its legs. That'd have to be a very large traveler. It'd have to be as big as these trees. Anyway, before I do that, actually, I just noticed there's an anthill here, and there's a little thing moving. Despite the weather, the large anthill was bustling with activity. Let me guess, this place does not have normal ants? You work hard, don't you? The small creature said, as the pair watched the ants carry all manner of things into their home. I mean, I see a thing moving, but it certainly doesn't look like an ant. The ants didn't seem to mind the creature picking up a handful of the leftover straws. Oh, that wasn't a creature. That was a... a tinder. Okay, I could get a fire started. And then what? Cook the meat? Is it uncooked? It actually doesn't even say if it's cooked or not. I'm assuming it isn't. I don't know. Let's have a chat. Actually, let's try to pet it first. Come here. The Alva tugged hard on the creature's ear, stopping it as it was about to move closer to the large sow. Okay, let's not. H Hello? We don't mean you any harm. Can you help us? Glosson's red eye followed the creature's movements, her mouth watering in response to the feast presenting itself before her. Never mind. We will get by somehow. The creature stuttered as it quickly backed away from the huge beast. I'm going to take a guess that I need to feed it meat to satiate its hunger. An, in an insatiable being has made these woods her home. It's not insatiable. It can be satiated. I'm going to satiate the hell out of her with my satiating meat. 
And I'm going to keep using the word satiating because it's kind of cool. I don't get to say it very often. I'm going to satiate my thirst, if you can even use the word that way, with this tea. Mmm. Lovely. Do you think if I keep pressing this button, maybe a hundred times, I can cause the Glosin to die of dehydration? Hmm, probably not. Actually, wait a minute. Maybe I don't even need to cook the meat. Whoa. I just saw the shadowy being up here. Get out of here. Maybe I can just give it the meat straight up. Hmm. No. Like, I, I don't get why the game doesn't tell you... The game is very unresponsive to half solutions. Which is very unfortunate. Okay, assuming I need to feed it meat, which is probably what I have to do, why doesn't it say something like... You would have, you know, you would have done that, but the meat wasn't cooked, or, you know, it wouldn't eat the meat. If only it was cooked, it would be usable. Something like that, not just no. Anyway, let's get the fire going. Uh, okay. Apparently I don't even make a fire. What am I doing with the tinder, then? I don't know. Let's go to the creepy place with the arm. 